when i had completed my grade 12 and i was figuring out what i wanted to do in life most of us also have this habit of just thinking about what will pay us the most and somebody had told me that if you search on google for the number one paying job in the world being an actuary will show up as the number one and the number one paying job by default entails one of the most difficult exams in the universe to crack and that gets me to actuarial science in india actuarial science has picked up quite a bit again in the last somehow in the last 10 years all these qualifications have really picked up now one is you all guy you everyone assumes i'll just do actuarial science because it's tough or it's high paying or whatever it is but do you guys know what actually does the word actuary mean or what 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 is the core of this qualification many people say it's maths some people say it's statistics but the true answer is actuarial science is all about risk if you understand risk you will be able to understand actuarial science i'm going to get into the technical details in a bit but first let me give you a quick few fun facts right one of my uh, you know long time back some one one mentor of mine had told me that if you want to do actuarial science you have to assume that you're going to lock yourself in the room for five years and throw the keys out because that's what it's going to take to really clear this exam somebody else had told me it's a burnout game right you work extremely hard for a short and by a short meaning of maybe a decade where you study and work together you put intense amounts of energy in studying and you get that kind of payout at a very young age a lot of money but you get burnt out in a in a relatively short span of time but for those people who who study actuarial science work very hard get a very high paying job and sort of burn out in 10 15 years it's worth it because you made that kind of wealth already so that's another major advantage of actuarial science next if you see the number of actuaries that are actually giving the exam and how many people complete the entire exam in if i take india as an example the ratio is crazy there are tens of thousands of people giving exams every year and till a few years back i'd seen on the official website there were less than 600 people in the country who had completed this qualification so it's even more difficult than any of the upsc exams ca exams any of your iim iit exams in terms of completing the entire qualification but wait for the rest of the video because i'm going to give you a few hacks as to how you can actually go ahead with this qualification and still make a stellar career even if you don't land up completing the entire course which by the way should be a goal irrespective let me just give you an example of what actuaries do right the best example i'm going to give you guys is of insurance because that's where the need of actuaries really started if you guys have taken a life insurance so you're knowing thing about life insurance this will make sense and if you don't i'll explain it right when do you take life insurance first of all is let's say i have a family and i am the guy who's making the money for the family right they they actually have they they, they have food and education and entertainment because i am the breadwinner of the family i'm worried that if something happens to me what's going to happen to my family so i'll go to an insurance company and i'll tell them that listen if something happens to me please give my family 5 crore rupees so the insurance company says fine i'll give your family 5 cr but in turn if you stay alive every year that you allow you pay me a premium you pay me that's what it's called you pay me something i mean i pay the insurance company every year i pay them let's say 1 lakh rupees they say that every year you allow you pay 1 lakh so i think to myself that okay if i'm alive i'll pay 1 lakh and if i stay alive which is good for me that 1 lakh is wasted but if something does happen to me this 1 lakh will give my family 5 crores if something happens to me. that's what insurance or life insurance really means right i secure my family in case something happens to me by paying the company a small amount every year and by the way that is going to last for let's say 20 years 30 years right that means for every year i pay them 1 1 lakh rupees hypothetically for 30 years if i survive more than 30 years hopefully my 1 lakh into 30 gets wasted and i don't care but if in within 30 years something would happen to me then what right so so that's why i take life insurance now this was a hypothetical example that i asked the company for 5 crores and they tell me pay 1 lakh every year but in the real world this is actually what happens uh, i had done this life insurance for my family a, a few years back i told them for example i wanted 5 crores they did a calculation based on my father's situation right so when i say situation i mean what is his background in terms of career what is his earning capacity how is his health you know is he Uh, what is his age does he have any medical history do they uh, is he a smoker or a non smoker why do they need all this because they also they 
calculate how much he travels right why because it's a very dark thought process but the company has to calculate probability of risk of anybody actually dying and there is a formula that they have that okay if we have 1000 people paying us premium every year based on our calculation we feel maybe 50 of them will die you know it's unfortunate but that's how they do it so based on that they know that for those 50 people they have to pay the entire insured amount whereas the balance people will keep paying them what i was explaining was premium this way the insurance company makes money and all the customers are either secure by paying premium or their families are secure by getting the insured amount this is by the way how the insurance world works the point i was trying to make is how does the insurance company decide that what should be the premium that my father has to pay because every individual's background medical history risk profiles are different this is where an actuary comes in because it is so complicated because it's to do with risk it's to do with death it's to do with human tendencies as a, as a domain under insurance every human's premium will be a little different right your premium versus my premium versus my father's premium will be a little different because of age and medical history etc etc that's what an actuary calculates he takes probabilities he takes risks into account he looks at the past trends of you know where do we stay you know staying in bombay might be a little different from staying in delhi risk wise you have to take so many variables and then you calculate the right premium because that's what makes the insurance companies profitable so guys if you get into actuarial science this is the kind of world you are going to work in and that's why you have to be good at maths and statistics because that's you have to calculate probabilities of risk with that said i'm going to get into a little bit of the details so actuarial science as you guys will know if you know anybody is doing it the first thing is there's a uk actuarial science and there's an indian actuarial science and there are other countries as well but again for us uk and india is important just to make it clear in this video i'm going to talk more about the uk one because that's what most people end up doing and i'll explain the there are very few differences between india and uk primarily the curriculum and the qualification is the same in value so that's not the problem but certain situations like the way the exams are structured the passing rate the fee structure of course these things are different if you ask me or if you ask us at zell we will recommend that you go for the uk one because that's the one which is more people end up clearing it a little more and we know that people are getting those kind of opportunities more in the world so with that said i'm going to jump into the uk version so the body that conducts these exams is called is ifoa institute and faculty of actuaries uh, now when it comes to the eligibility basically you can appear for actuarial science exams as soon as you cleared your grade 12 first of all you need to have taken maths and you need to have scored 85% in it so i would already recommend that more than if you guys understand the difference between maths and stats you have to be really good at stats statistics okay i would recommend if you are not good at statistics don't do actuarial science because it's going to become even more difficult for you coming to the academic structure the actuarial science exams there are 13 exams out of 28 which you have to appear for split into four levels when it comes to the duration so now guys first of all it you can complete actuarial science within 4 to 5 years but the way the world works is because these exams are difficult the first few exams we can clear comfortably i think the first four five papers seven papers you can clear even if you are in your college uh, and then you start any which is working as an actuary who's completed partial exams all these kind of banks and insurance companies are hiring actuaries even if you've completed partial levels so that's what i would any which is recommend so instead of worrying about how long it takes aim at completing the first few papers at the earliest and start working and then for the rest of your life you can give the balance exams and keep growing but even if you just complete 7 8 9 papers and you start working you have a superb career trajectory so just don't worry about the time it takes aim at clearing the first few papers at the earliest so the exam window you can appear for actuarial science exams twice a year in the months of april and september when it comes to the passing rate out of 10 how many people end up clearing so statistics show that you can you know around 4 to 5 people out of 10 land up clearing it however i have seen people clearing the first few exams that quickly but then at the higher level it becomes a little more challenging so just be prepared for it it's not something to be worried about but it's something that you should know right because you'll have to enter with that mindset of putting in that kind of effort it will be worth it though so just sort of have it in mind next when it comes to the scope right i've already explained a lot about the kind of opportunities you have like i said whether it's insurance companies or banks you know and now i know a lot of mnc's are hiring actuaries to any which is manage the risk 
profile of their companies. Uh, so it's going to grow. Eh? You're going to have a lot of actuaries across the world being hired. Any which way is the demand for hiring good actuaries is way more than the supply of people who've done it. So if you're looking at getting into it, it's a very niche, very powerful field that if you are successful and you'll be ultra successful. The salary package is if you've completed a few papers, start at five, six lakhs, just like a normal chartered accountant, but they go up to immense crores and crores depending on how quickly and how many papers and how well you've completed these exams and what's of course your work experience like in India and overseas, right? This is not a, an Indian restricted qualification. Lastly, guys, when it comes to the fee structure, simply put, you can finish actually in between four to five lakhs total. And this will include almost everything, your training, your registration, the exam fees, etc, etc. There are certain ways to reduce the fees a little bit here and there based on showing your earning income, etc. We can always help you with all the details for that. You can research for that on the official website. But I think most of you all should prepare for around a 4 to 5 lakh rupee outflow. The good part is this is not all done at once. It's spread over more than minimum 3 to 4 years because nobody completes all these exams in a shorter period than that. So that way, if you think about it, it's quite a reasonable qualification. It's just like uh, any of the other CA or you know finance related qualifications. It's cheaper than a lot of MBAs. So cost wise, I think the qualification is quite strong. Beyond this, guys, I would just say that uh, I think this is this is covering most of the technical understanding for y'all. And for many of y'all who don't know what actual science is, I think I've covered the basics of it at least quite in depth. Beyond this, if there's anything that you think I have missed, please leave it in the comments and let us know what other videos you all want us to make. Thank you.